watching a throwback video of Alpha Investments from the past. So as we go back in time, all the way, ladies and gentlemen, to the year 2016, we are approaching 10 years old. These are 8-year-old booster boxes. The patron, Kyle, all the way over in Bellingham, Washington, says, Rudy, we got to go back. We do a half a case. We got a 50-50 shot of getting the original masterpiece, one of the greatest artifact subset series in Magic history. Join me. Sit back, relax as we discuss Magic's past. How we got here today, and boy, did we not realize how good we had it a long time ago, everybody. That is the theme of today's conversation. You don't realize how good something is, how good a product is, how much you enjoy something until it's gone. Let's take a nice look at some common cards here. Boy, the era of Kaladesh, the era of energy, the era of the infamous anger of inability to interact with energy, and uh, pretty strong power level, and I believe was it Kaladesh or Aether that had uh, the old smuggling copter over here that was uh, was banned. Is that still banned after all these years? It may be. I don't remember. So we're going to explore this. There's our very first nice little hit there, our nice little... I think the actual land cycle is still probably going to be probably about, I don't know, 6 to 12 bucks a piece. Probably going to be some spicy little cards there. And this was an era also, ladies and gentlemen, where foils were actually special and still held value. A little bit of curling, you see that? Right out of the pack there, everybody. And you guys know me, this has all been stored in climate control, and yet we still have some natural curling, which never seems to be fixed, and good old scrap heap. And... <laughs> You know, it's funny how people used to put so much more value and uniqueness on even the, the land cycle in packs and how that used to be something special. And now people don't even, full art lands are just an assumption and there's so many variants. Madcap! I remember that one. It's just kind of not even something special anymore. Uh, foil multipliers used to be a really big deal. Remember folks, this is pre-2020 when the world was still, I guess, normal in the previous era. Uh, foil cards were, um, how should I say this, were a major deal. Ooh, Mrs. N, the Vital Force. This was not one of the major hits, like uh, I think Chandra, was she, was she the one that was the major hit? It's our first Mythic of the video, everybody. Um, I still see your box prices. So these things hit about four four $450 a booster box before the market crash. Chief uh, of the Foundry, Great Uncommon back in the day, I remember that one. And uh, Ancient, the old giant Leviathan. Oh my god. Foil torture. Oh, I was just talking about this. If this was tw oh my god. if this was 2017. Oh my I, I wish I could explain to you all how big of a deal this card was, like pre-orders and release. And to hit this is our foil mythic is just a special moment, man. I know in today's in 2024 standards. I'm sure it's bulk and it's 25 cents or some ridiculous game piece army approval thing. But man, that card, I'm pretty sure that was in... Tell me if I'm wrong. By the way, allocation. Um, that card, if it's the one I'm thinking... I could be wrong. I could be mixing up with like an Oath of the Gatewatch or a different one. But this was like a the regular version pre-ordered for $30, $40. And I think the foils were $50 to $70 on release a long time ago. It was such a big deal. Anyways, it's just... Brings back good memories. You got the old marsh. Nice land number two. And these were similar to uh, shock lands and fetch lands. Kaladesh had the land cycle where you would average uh, three per box. It was not some sort of uh, showdown. This was not like a Boulder's Gate situation where you would have zero lands in a box or one land or you would have six or some outrageous. This was uh, similar to the shock and fetch on the track printing. It was a pretty stable thing there. Insidious will, everybody. Um, anyway, back to box pricing. So these boxes hit about four, I think maybe four twenty-five, four fifty at the peak um, in the twenty twenty-one boom. Everybody, um, I even increased my position very substantially. And oh, foil land there. And during even during that run up there, where I had an infamous video that I published on YouTube, uh, telling everybody I was paying like literally full market price at the time, and I was paying three to three hundred and ten dollars. 
a box was my buy price, and I accumulated a lot of call dust sealed boxes. Peak was about four fifty a box, and then we hit a crash uh, at the low, probably six nine months ago. These probably hit a low of about two hundred and fifty dollars a box. As of the filming of this video, TCG players probably going to be back to around three hundred and fifty dollars a box for call dust. And the most important factor is not really the price. Yeah, it wouldn't be magic without a worm or a Helion or a Hydra, of course. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I've been watching is really not the price movement on Kaladesh type boxes, uh, but really the market depth of how much is left. Hey, we got the rock there. There was some attempt at shenanigans with that card, that with uh, energy back in the day. Um, I think the fact that now we see the least amount of English Kaladesh sealed boxes on the open market is what's interesting to me. Okay, here's a great moment here. I don't know if it's worth anything today, but again, this set right now does not have a lot of Mythics worth a lot, but this is one of the uh, the rares that I was always surprised became cheap in the crash and everything. Uh, these one-drop type of things that can slow your opponent, and you have life gain, and especially white, you know, human cleric, white deck type of crap. Um, rares like this were always very, uh, I always saw were very desirable. Because there's always a lot of room for shenanigans and uh, to really irritate your opponent. I don't know. Hey, the summonings over here. This is another mythic that was never, never really found its home there. We got the giant spectacle. And I know a lot of people are going to say, I swear, Rudy, those mythics, or not the mythics, the foiling just, just hits differently on pre-2020 cards. And I, you know, I think that might be a mental thing with all the way we view the past. Um, <laughs> Metalwork Colossus, the old 11 drop 10-10. Infamous, not a terrible card, but let me give you all a little backstory here. This was the card, to this day, I still have one to 2,000 copies of this card um, from the world-famous Rudy gift box from when I bought out all the Magic the Gathering gift packs when uh, Wizards and Magic attempted to copy Pokemon and start doing those big fancy gift pack things. <laughs> Diabolic Tutor. Hey, Reservoir. Okay, we're getting a lot of good cards in this box. This is a very nice box, Kyle. Um... Oh, man. Reservoir, the Thopter. What was the other one? Panharmonicon? Oh, cards like this are so infamous for Kaladesh, man. Very, very infamous cards. I don't know financially if everything's just bulk and zeroed out now. Hey, third land. Courtyard. Very nice there. And a foil. Just a foil. Uncommon, everybody. Remember, this was still the set where if you had a foil rare, foil mythic, like we did in this box, Torch of Defiance, a lot of these foils, the multipliers were a very big deal. These were not just like, oh, look, it's worth the same. Man, I always thought that was a decent little card. Um, this was back in the day when I actually, uh, my YouTube channel was still pretty small. We didn't really have a lot going on. I was doing more than a lot of my other jobs. Lord of Luxury, I always thought that was a pretty underappreciated card also. And I actually put more time into following the meta, Ooh, the net decks. Yeah, these are, this is the time I used to spend more time following the singles and everything. This was pretty... I was still doing a lot outcome. so that was a cool rare. I, I spent a lot more time in this era um, still selling single cards. And uh, to remind you all, I never did a mass box opening in Kaladesh, even though I look back, I probably should have, um, because this was right off the announcement of, hey, Mrs. S. Rye. Shahili Rye kitty cat combo. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful young lady here. Very infamous card, and of course, she is blessing us with our gorgeous box art and everything. Great mythic over here. Uh, remember, this was still too when we'd get mythics and planeswalkers. It was like like pulling a planeswalker was still a pretty big deal back in this era. Okay, I think. Oh, I forgot this was set with Aether Hub. I uh, apologize, Kyle, or anybody watching. I do not know if we have multiple Aether Hubs. I remember this particular card. This was a huge deal because when stores were doing mass box openings, these were. Play sets of these, four uncommons were $20. These were $5 and uncommon. Hey, the Rudy Giant Penis card. Um, you know, the Aether Hubs were a major, major lifesaver for mass box openers and stores back in the day. So, I again, I don't know if this day and a, I, I don't know if it means anything. But this was an era where a lot of stores did do mass box openings. This is where I officially put an end to my mass box openings because I was deathly afraid that with Mark Rosewater's new uh, Masterpiece cards in every set moving forward, um, it would pretty much dilute the value of all normal cards to a point where the secondary market was going to be almost completely uh, nuked there. So, 
We got a nice little handcraft, great little uncommon there. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what you're looking at, you don't know Kaladesh. The Inventor's Fair. Anybody? Anybody? I just want your opinion on this card. Comment below if you know what this is and the kind of what this is. Comment comment below. I just want to see. I'm not going to say anything. That's, uh, I, that might be one of the most expensive cards in the set as of the filming of this video right now. Or it might be the most expensive card in the set. Which would be uh, pretty ironic, but I guess really not that surprising, if you know what I mean. Alright, everybody. Moving forward here. It's, you know, I think looking back on this, that's another rock duplicate rare. Kaladesh, again, we didn't realize how amazing and how good we had it in the world of magic and Hasbro and Wizards and Key to the City. Great little card there. We didn't realize, I don't think including myself, I didn't appreciate um, where magic was at this time. Um, the market and all of us were still focused. Great little one. I think it was the common reprinted from Dragon's Maze, if I remember. Angel of Invention. This used to be a nice little mythic over here. Not like a $40 mythic, but it used to be a solid... I think this was like a $10 mythic back in the day. But I... I look back, and man, what I would give to have Magic return to this kind of block and design and release schedule and lack of a million variants and more simplicity where you could know which version card and everything. And, you know, today, in 2024, it really makes us realize how much Magic has just been completely milked and modified ever since, you know, Chris Cox was promoted to running from Magic to Hasbro and the, the plan to just endlessly grow Magic and grow revenue and grow all this stuff and, you know, the whole, what it's done to the brand. I can't say that it's destroyed the brand, but it's changed the brand to something that obviously most of us, especially old farts like me, would not prefer. Pummeler, nice little uh, construct there. But that's just the nature of life, and there's nothing we can do about that. Um, that is pretty much the magic and wizard's direction. Wow, this dream. Cute little girl. So that's the end of box one. We're going to jump right into box two over here, hoping that we can still hit the masterpiece card today, Kyle. Again, it's about one masterpiece card per case. I think it was like one every five boxes, I think it was, or just maybe just slightly over a case. So we should have a 50-50 shot. I'm really hoping we get lucky and we can pull that off, but, you know, we're going to find out, everybody. And, um, oh, maybe this one, I just realized the pack order on this one's a little different, too. And the colors are richer. Midnight Oil. Is this, uh, was one box? Did I grab, that's a Made in, I just realized that. So this is a Made in USA. I have a feeling this is a Made in Belgium box. So I did, okay, I did not grab these boxes from the same case. I just grabbed some loose ones. So this is even more of a wild card video. We have a Paradox Welcome and our first foil. We got the vendor. Oh, interesting, too. The uh, the curvature, the curvature of the foils on the Belgium one here are nowhere near as bad as the USA curvature of the foils. Well, this is an unexpected little interesting shift. Okay, Sanctum. All right, starting off good there, right at the beginning. One little land, and uh, beginning of the box. Anyway, so as far as just the future of this stuff, you know, my conversation to you all is, I got so hey, there's Panharmonicon. One of the best rares in the set. Stupidly broken, powerful card. And uh, that probably still holds true today. I don't think even in 2024 standards, people are going to think that's a bad card. That's a very infamous card. Showdown there. I still, I know this is a hot take, and I can uh, pump and dump, because you guys know Rudy has a position in Kaladesh, but I still believe Kaladesh boxes are severely underpriced. We have another, we got a construct over here. We have this time, the Noxious. Noxious, things pronounced? Gear Hulk for Mythic number one in box number two. Um, I still am blown away that a product that this unique and special and Pia. Uh, hey, Madcap Experiment for Full Rare. That's a nice little hit there. Again, in 24 standards, I apologize to everybody on behalf of Wizards and Dr. Cox's intelligence, but I doubt the multiplier and value, <laughs> the cruiser, probably has much value in today's standards anymore. Essentially, we're hoping to get really lucky with um, a Masterpiece Series insert card, but um, it is not easy to... Hey, Aether Hub there, our second one in the video. Oh! <laughs> there we go, immediately. Okay, okay, okay. That caught me off guard. Unfortunately, everybody, it is not one of the ones we were really hoping. It is a Torrential Gear Hulk Lottery Masterpiece. Beautiful, 
Beautiful card, everybody, with that gorgeous copper-looking rusted look. Um, Kyle, we did get one immediately right in box two. But Rudy's uh, literally, clearly, they're not from the same case. So we do not know if we can actually get a third one in the next box. So it'll be interesting because since Rudy just grabbed three boxes off the shelf, um, that is a nice hit. Unfortunately, it's not a Mana Volt or Soul Ring. Or we did not hit the really, really crazy version, but hey. We still hit an out oh, tutor. Up, oh, giant penis cannon. We actually hit a masterpiece card. Two boxes in. Man, does that bring back memories. Oh my god, that was such a special thing. I can't. Uh, I, I guess the best way to say it to you all today, I think a masterpiece pool is like a serialized pool today, right? We got Shahili's artistry over here. I think pulling that is probably equivalent. Well, no, yeah, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say, wait, the pool rate, yeah. Unless it's obviously something ridiculous, like, you know, Carlo of Manor trying to get a serialized card. Hey, land number two in this box. Very cool, everybody. Oh, man, it's been so long. We actually pulled that off. Torrential Gear Hulk. It sucks that it wasn't one of the super mega expensive ones, Courier. But you know what? We still actually got it on camera. Holy crap. How many years has been since we've done a video like this and actually pulled something like that? Eliminating the comment. I don't even I don't even think in 2024 standards. I don't even think they would print this artwork Like I even think artwork that's even like that not just artwork with like actual like women and stuff like that I think like more like violent artwork or like that like the knife and the blood and stuff I don't even think they'll print that. Hey Dynavolt Tower. I always thought that was a really cool card I'm surprised I never did anything But I think post the 2020 dystopian disaster that happened to the entire planet um, you know, that was the line in the sand. When we crossed 2020, uh, culture, perspective, everything had a permanent shift. Kind of how many people say after, you know, the year 2000 and 2001 and, you know, September 11th thing, after all of that kind of changed, hey, the flagship. I'm not a vehicle fan, but I always thought this was probably one of the coolest vehicle cards. Just only out there. But I think similar to uh, the 2000, 2001 era, I think 2020 was another line in the sand, similar to like 2008. Like every five, maybe 10, 12 years, we have these major world events, and then it, there seems to be a major shift, and it never seems to go back to the previous version of the world. I hope that makes sense. It seems like there's always some sort of tilt in that kind of stuff. And, you know, doing a box opening from 2017 is a very big eye-opener of how far we've come, everybody. And I think that's the best way for me to kind of say it. Oh, man, I just, I'm still, dude, box two. Masterpiece. Oh, man. So, that still leaves me to uh, discuss the future with you all as we crack these things. And I, I know I'm pretty much, ooh, really? Cataclysmic Gear Hulk? Wow, we are Gear Hulk City! Because we also hit the other Gear Hulk as a mythic. We got Tarantula as a masterpiece and Cataclysmic now, the white Gear Hulk there. Holy smokes! That's all, this is a Gear Hulk loaded box. Multiple Gear Hulk mythics and a masterpiece Gear Hulk. Engineer Mike, great uncommon back in the day. I definitely remember that. <laughs> the trap, I love the artwork on that, but it was never a good card. Um, I still think, you know, like people, I've been getting more and more messages as people started to notice uh, recently. They're like, anybody noticing that Rudy kind of has pulled back or stopped doing collection buying videos? There was uh, a good amount of people in there. I guess there was maybe some social media or somebody posted that on some private MySpace thing or, I don't know, some back page website or something. And yes, uh, I've been focusing, number one, I do have still collection deals going on. They're just, uh, a lot of, some of them are just, well, people requested not to be filmed. And other ones I just haven't gotten around to either filming or publishing. And the other thing that people don't want to hear is that 90% uh, of my spend rate, tool, 90% of my spend rate has actually been buying new sealed magic um, post-crash of 2021. That's really been where my my excitement and deployment of money has been and well videos like that don't really they don't feel the same they don't come off the same because the public doesn't seem to grow oh, oh sorry uh, another key to the city and a larger than life foil common the public responds very differently when i when i post a collection buying video of a bunch of new sealed product versus when i post a collection by oh reservoir our second one of the video and a foil uncommon nice little race car there People, I, I think what it is, is if I post a collection buying video of sealed product or new products, 
people view it as, um, well, look what Rudy's, ooh, boy, what a difference on this box. Look how dark the ink is on that. Did we have the other one? Yeah, look at this, look at this, everybody. I want to show you guys something. Can you all see the difference? How much darker that back card is there? Like, the print difference between the uh, USA and Belgium has been, uh, boy, that's a pretty noticeable difference on there. Holy smokes. Uh, but anyway, let me, let me try to explain my thoughts on that. Nice little capture by the consulates. If I put a video of me buying a collection of an older guy or someone retiring or a family needing money, you know, people will usually, ooh, courtyard, people will usually comment something like, oh, here's Rudy, more cards being taken off the market to manipulate and ruin my, you know, my ex-girlfriend or something, you know, something like that. But if I do a buyout video of a store, so, uh, <laughs> anybody, anybody, the card, the smugglers, if I do a buyout and I show me buying hundreds or, you know, a thousand boxes of new sealed product. Um, people get very strange by that. They view it differently because it's not, it doesn't fit the narrative that Rudy only sells um, new product and hoards old product in Metalwork again. And it's a very strange vibe that the video kind of generates on there. And I noticed that um, probably about six months ago, but see, I haven't done any since the market's turn. So I haven't tested my theory to see if it was mostly due to the bear market. But I did notice that people would get almost very angry and agitated and send me very nasty messages if I showed me buying a bunch of boxes or from a store or an individual or a family. It would, it would almost come off like, oh my God, look what he's doing. Rudy makes videos talking about the market and sells new product. Then he turns around, buys it back at a, a low price and ruins it. What? Oh my. People get a very strange... Um, they create a very strange vibe with that kind of video. So, you know, I've kind of throttled back on sharing a lot of that kind of behind the scenes of a lot of the new product that I have been buying because I think people just find, ooh, this is nice. Look at that. Again, like this would be a $20, $25 foil land. Like back in the day, getting the foil land cycle was, again, that was a really big deal. We've had some really good foils in this, Kyle. I mean, not just, you know, the Masterpiece pool, but, you know, we had a foil mythic and our foil rares. Like, we actually had some really good pulls. Like, obviously, you know, the cards today and the game piece value is going to be nowhere near. There's, you know, we'd have to, oh, rip, Aether Hub. You know, there's nowhere near expensive cards to turn a profit on just the normal standard cards in the set. And, hey, at least we got a Masterpiece, even though it wasn't an expensive one. But that's just, you know, that is kind of the nature of these old rare items in Stalker. Anyway, I want to, let me just finish this, because I know we're on the last of the box of, of the video already, and I do not believe the odds of us pulling a second masterpiece is pretty much going to happen, so, confiscation coup. That was, that's kind of why I think you all have seen, you know, as I've had more limited time with some of these, really? A second shot? Wow, really? That's, boy, Planeswalker Mythic Pool City. There's a lot of Planeswalker Mythic we pulled. Man, that's wild. That would, have been, that would have been such a big deal years ago. Um, Orary. Again, this was another one of the really cool energy, really neat combo cards people did. Great card back in the day. So eventually I will bring back more collection buying and sharing as things get back to normal around here. And I get past this insane sorcery launch. We catch up with all the crazy demand of me selling Ixalan boxes for $89 ship. People have been going crazy with that. Um, my Boulder's Gate set boxes for $89 are pretty much on last call now. Because those things are over $100 before tax on TCG Player. Crafter, oh, see, like back in the day, beautiful. Look at the, like, having basic lands that were this gorgeous used to be something really special, man. Like, the market would value stuff like that, like over, like, a buck or two for, like, a foil specialty land. If it was a really beautiful one people liked. But that's, see, that's another category that, you know, secret layers... And full arts and all these insane versions in every set just complete. Oh wow, really? That is completely diluted and made no value. Like wizards, I, why wizards went out of their way? I guess maybe the game piece thing to just destroy so many. Hey, wow, really? A second inventor's fair? Can we talk about it yet? Nah, let's just make it dramatic. If you know what that card is, you know what that card is. But that wizards, you know, they went out of their way to remove value from many things that they could have done a lot with but they just kind of just dissolved it to nothing and why that's a good idea 
when a lot of that value could be used, it's like secret lair. Like, why would you reprint your equity and do this stuff when, you know, just move these things to standard sets and increase desirability and, you know, just kind of shift it around to sell more actual packs and boxes versus just trying to get a bunch of little $30, $40 miscellaneous sales and just selling singles. And it's a very strange direction. Aether works Marvel. Ladies and gentlemen, the first appearance of the day of the world-famous Marvel machine one of the infamous energy card mythics in the era of Polydex. A lot of people, and I know this is weird sounding to you all who weren't around, but a lot of people were angry and did not like uh, the whole energy thing. I thought it was cool. I liked it. I wasn't a fan of vehicles, though. I, to this day, I'm still not a huge fan of vehicles, Legacy. Um, but a lot of people really got very <sighs> disenfranchised with Magic and Wizards Another authority of the councils. If you know, you know. Great card. So we are pulling phenomenal rares, by the way. I mean, these things... I, God, those have to be $10, $20 rares. Um, you know, energy was something that people got really angry with. The lack of interaction, the ability to, you know, remove someone's energy or their build-up. Or, you couldn't do a lot with a lot of the cards with someone's energy ability. And a lot of people just felt it was too powerful. And Demon of the Dark Schemes, the first pool of the video. So Kyle, again, crazy powerful card back in the day there. Um, I don't know, again, if that's even... It might be a couple dollar bulk mythic at this point in time. Because the world in the secondary market has just turned into game piece spaghetti. But that's, boy, a lot of pieces of historical crazy... Hey, Dynavolt Tower. That was a cool one back in the day. I remember that one. I think that was the one where you pump it. Wasn't that the one you pump with energy? It's like a lightning bolt. Yeah, you pay five energy and pops it for lightning bolt, yeah. And you get two energy every time you do it, not one. That's what it was. Yeah, I remember that now. It was what, colorless? Three. Three to cast. So, very cool stuff. Very powerful cards in this set, man. And a syndicate trafficker on there. So, as we get to the end of this video, everybody, thanks for joining me on this nice throwback. We don't do a lot of vintage stuff, and uh, obviously that's something we want to return to in the future. Animation module for nice artifact there. Um, I do think that we will put some more time into going back and exploring old sets again. Um, that's something that you have to remember. The reason you don't see a lot of this is because this isn't... Oh, captured by the console. The beautiful foil version there. Um, the reason you don't see a lot of videos like this is, number one, I like to take my time and really enjoy these older ones because, you know, a lot of these... There's a very finite amount of these older boxes left in the world. There's not tens of thousands of call it just sitting around. It's It's... You know, there's a lot of this stuff that, to me, it is it is a special thing. And it also, it's a lot of memories for me and different eras of my magic life and my little short life on this planet. And the Kaladesh era was a very, uh, very special time, very enjoyable time, paradoxical. And I do expect in the future, when Rudy does slow down and, you know, does less all these crazy things every week and busy behind the scenes and the crazy Patreon and... You in the future, ooh, you, oh, this is one of my favorite pieces of art. I love that art on that land. You know, I do plan to slow down, you know, in the years coming in the future. And, of course, doing that will give me more time to do less videos and also, but do more, like, vintage videos and explore old things and talk about the stories of, I mean, like, another direction for me is eventually there's going to be a point when Rudy's older. The amount of stories and behind-the-scenes things that has happened with Alpha Investments, the people who really hate me, the people who've tried to work with me, the people who've done terrible things. You know, there's the amount of stories and wild things that I can just do so many story time videos of just literally, you know, I've already, this is my ninth year on YouTube. Just nine years. Ooh, Aether Hub. So the things and all the little things that happen, there's so many wild things just between different phases Oop, tutor and blades. I think it's going to make for a really cool old man Rudy story time future as I do slow down and as I become an old fart ending on a key to the city, everybody. So overall, we'll take one last look over here, Kyle. And we'll take a quick, nice little looky-loo. And everybody, that was our masterpiece. Beautiful, beautiful series. Absolutely beautiful condition there. That was our main stain, kind of our... Our main pool there, everybody. It is just nice to see we actually did one. I know it's not worth a ton where the patron made a bunch of profit, but we actually did it. And I think that's a really cool thing to have. 
It's 2024. The Kaladesh openings are essentially extinct on the internet. And the prices of these boxes. And are there even like 50 or 100 boxes online? Somebody, if you actually watch the video at the end, go to TCG Player and tell me English boxes. Under $1,000 a box. You know what? Any price. Even if it's $10,000 for a box. How many boxes of Kaladesh are even on TCG Player? If I had to take a guess right now, I would bet 20 boxes. I would bet 20. Three cases worth of boxes would be my guess. And I bet eBay would probably be around the same thing. 10, 15, maybe 20 boxes. But again, a lot of those stores, it's the same box on both platforms, but whatever. So folks, thanks for watching. Kyle, thanks for being a very kind patron. I know you've been waiting many weeks for this video, but you know I got behind with the source read everything going on. So this is definitely a really nice throwback. And uh, final thoughts for everybody who actually watches to the end. Um, coming up here, just to let everybody know, if you're a patron and you're a supporter and you like to kind of get yap with me behind the scenes, even if you don't like to buy stuff from me, just to kind of talk and watch the crazy behind the scenes stuff on Patreon with the patron army. Uh, coming up, obviously, uh, we got some small white set releases. We got some interesting Pokemon conversation. We'll have new uh, One Piece releases coming up. And yes, you know, um, depending when you watch this video, we have Outlaw Slender Junction collector and commander boxes. Collector boxes of Outlaws will probably be like 195 to 205 or something. So if you want a bunch of Outlaws, collector boxes will be in the 190 shipped to your door. Um, then we'll have the commander decks and everything. Well, it should be the same thing. Super below market, whatever. Um, then after that, again, going into the summer, the two big things I'm excited about in Magic is going to be, obviously, Modern Horizons 3 with the email that I sent to myself regarding the fetch land distribution and print run and track printing similar to Ravnica for Shockland. So expect fetch lands for days. So 12 collector boxes, 12-pack uh, collector boxes of Modern Horizons 3 should be netting between 6 and 9 fetch lands in 12 packs. It should be out of control. Um, let's see here. Then we have the... As you guys have seen a little bit in the background here, we had last year's Arabian Night Alpha Investment Celebration custom artwork from Sue Ellen Brown. Uh, we are going to be having the Antiquities Celebration here with the Indiana Jones Lost uh, Warehouse theme. So we're going to have a really cool thing. It's going to be pretty cheap. I'm going to have the price. I'm trying to keep the price super low on this time. I mean, we're talking like $149, $199 shipped. We're going to have a nice and kind of very cheap price for something that's going to be absolutely massive in size. I was able to get the prices down, and obviously international shipping today versus COVID era is way down, so very cool stuff. And then, of course, next month we have the big announcement in the first test with Flesh and Blood with the anime Japanese theme, Miss Veal set. So that is going to be a major, major interesting thing to see how the U.S. market and the excitement of everything with Flesh and Blood with this first little anime style and a nice different theme. And um, so far, it's, uh, it's, it feels pretty good, and we'll see how you all enjoy that. It'll be exciting to do a, a spoiler video and get excited and get towards that at the end of May. So we still have a ways off for that. I think that's about it right now. Um, oh, yeah, one last thing. Um, I do have a reserve of about 50 to 75 sorcery kits um, due to, well, a combination of crypto payments that didn't happen. Uh, a couple people who tried to send payments who weren't patrons. And uh, pretty much people rejected stuff, and I kept a small buffer because I was afraid of overselling and screwing the sale up. So uh, in the coming week or so, once I catch up, another probably about 7 to 10 days, um, I am going to be offering patrons some of the leftover Sorcery 2.0 bundles with the Amazon Warriors, the exclusive playmats and everything. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that goes. I'm sure people are going to fight for that because it's uh, anyone can have them. You already bought them, you can buy more. I don't care. It's just leftovers. I mean, people are spending twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for the kit on the secondary market. It's absolutely insane. Um, that's all I have today. Hope you all enjoyed the video, Kyle. Thanks for being a very kind patron. I'll get all this stuff packed up and heading your way over the next few days. And everybody, life is short. I'm telling you, you don't realize it. And I know. Remember, not everyone's bad people out there, but there are. You know, not everyone's a good person. And just make sure you surround yourself with good people, good family, good friends. And people that better your life and push you in a good direction. That is that is the key to everything. Business, personal life, family. You need to have people who help you go in positive directions. Surround yourself with just people who constantly have problems, make bad choices, have drama. They feed on people's failure and negative things or something goes wrong. You can't, you know, those kind of things. They have strange impacts on your life. So that's always my advice to everybody. Always learn and listen and pay attention and 
kind of find your own way and kind of do what you enjoy and uh, things will take care of themselves. You'll have a beautiful day out there.